Hi everyone, welcome back to the Best Kept Secret Podcast. I am your host Sharon Mwangi and on this podcast my guests and I share our best kept secrets about certain topics. Today I have an incredible guest with me. Her name is Lydia. I will let her introduce herself and then we'll get right into today's topic. Hi guys. Hi, my name is Lydia KM. I'm a wellness and lifestyle content creator and a podcaster. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to have you. Know you know when you say Sharon Mwangi, I'm just like, it's Sharon K Mwangi. Oh, Sharon <laughs> with the K. Sharon, Sharon with the K. Mwangi with the K. Don't forget the K. You know what, when I say, like, oh, I'm going to see Sharon. And someone's like, which I'm like, Sharon K. I don't even say yeah. Mwangi, it's Sharon, Sharon K. K. You gotta put the K yeah. in Thank there. Thank you so much for having me here. You're actually my first guest. Stop it. You Wait, are. did you tell me this? I did. Oh my God, yeah. wow, that, that's exciting again. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Lydia is our first guest. Today, we're going to be speaking about attachment styles. And I'm so excited to just like get deep into that world because there's a lot to share. I think I'll start off by just like defining what attachment styles are for those who don't know. Maybe you can define it and then I can give like a background of like the research that was done yeah. for it to come up. Yeah. So um, first of all, me and Sharon really align on wellness topics. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the center yeah, even of what yeah. we talk about and things like yeah. that. Even the way we analyze our own life. Yeah, we're, we're like, like mm, you know, this is avoidance, this yeah, is a cure. Da, 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 yeah. Da. So I love that we connect on that. So attachment styles are basically how you relate and it's especially with in romantic relationship and they stem from how you related with your primary um, caregivers when you were a, a child. child so yeah. how well your attachment style are basically how well your primary caregivers were able to ascertain and meet your needs anticipate and meet your needs so mm. if your parents were able to meet your needs um, they were able to anticipate your needs well and meet them so your needs being warmth care um, emotional well-being they're able to do that well yeah. then you are going to be securely attached good for you guys Good, Good for, for you. you. We are happy we for wish you. We were Must you. be nice. <laughs> um, but if not, let's say if um, a parent did meet some of your needs, but inconsistently, you're yeah. most likely going to be anxious, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so I am anxious. So that means that I'm the kind of person who knows my needs can be met, but isn't sure, mm -hmm. right? So it's difficult to be trusting, um, very difficult to be trusting. You're kind of anxious because you're not yeah. sure that your needs are going, going to, to be, be met, met. Yeah. right? And then for avoidance, it's when your needs, all of your needs weren't met majority of the time yeah yeah um and most likely you might have had an avoidant parent as well mm. so what you learned is there's no point of even putting your needs on the yeah. table because you know that they're not going, going to, to be, be met. met so usually you're going You've to been, be emotionally yeah. withdrawn you're not somebody who's going to be okay being vulnerable because you don't trust who can actually yeah. meet your needs you've been uh, disappointed enough lot. times yeah. to know yeah. um and naturally unfortunately we tend to go and find partners who are the opposite it, yeah. of, our, um, of our attachment, um, the way we were we attach so that we can heal that wound. And mm. then that's why people are always asking, why can I not just meet another anxious and we are happy? Yeah. Nope, anxious are going to look for avoidance. Yeah, are going to be attracted to avoidance. To avoidance and because it feels versa. like their parent. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's the ba basics of yeah. um, attachment styles. Yeah. So the attachment style um, came from like a study that was done, I think in the 90s or the 80s. Actually, if you look on YouTube, you can even find the videos of the actual like um, the actual study as it was being done. So basically what they did is that they put um, kids and their moms in a room. And so they just studied these kids and uh, how they reacted to their moms leaving the room and coming back. So the kids that they noticed had like a secure attachment to their mom or their caregiver um, were kids where the mom would leave and they'd be a little like, oh, oh, mom left and they'd be a bit sad, but then they go back and keep playing with the other kids, like not really like phase, like, yeah, mom left, she'll be back. I'm gonna like go play with the other kids. For the anxious ones, when the mom would leave, they would lose it. Like they would throw tantrums, they would cry. And then when the mom comes back, they're upset at the mom. So they, they are very like 
why you now like trying to like love me but then i mean they would accept it but then they're like very like why did you leave me so they like their response to the mom leaving and coming back was very different from the secure kids and then the avoidance when the mom would leave they'd just be like mm, okay like whatever like they would just like not be phased by it when the mom comes back they're not phased by it either like they don't even like acknowledge that okay my mom is now back in the room they're just like up, like upset they're just like angry like okay you left me anyway so just like stay where you are mm-hmm. so that's how like they started to notice that kids actually have like patterns when they relate to their mom or their caregivers um and this would also you could also even see i think i even watched some snippets of like the mom and you could tell how the moms who had secure kids how they were self how they were soothing the kids was a lot more different than the other like anxious mom or the avoidant moms because now like the other one would be like um why are you crying you're making mommy upset you know what i mean and then you can tell that's not a healthy parent even from how they are soothing the children so um that's how the attachment um style theory came yeah. about and then it's just like morphed over the years and there are now like a lot of like books and a lot of like things you can read videos you can watch on them and i think i first started interacting with just like the attachment theory when i was in school doing my masters and the lecturer only like mentioned it in passing but i was really curious so i went and did like my own research and like learned and i was like damn like this is so accurate like i am so anxious and that's like that was like my first like realization that like gave me more insight about myself and how like how i've been dating like my dating mm-hmm. patterns and how why i was doing the things that i was doing yeah. yeah um i first interacted with um with the attachment theory when i did psychology in a in in a levels and i was just like oh, okay we're just studying what's happening i wasn't really taking it in as like yeah. oh this is what i do um and then last year um last was it less you know it was this year this year in february for my february yeah. read around valentines i read attached the book attached and I literally feel like my eyes it's like it's like I was asleep and then yeah, now I was awake. Yeah, you had awake. like an awakening. Yes. Yeah. And I kept telling people it's like if you're single this is the best place because you will be able to date from the beginning from a place of how you want to go on whereas mm-hmm. at the time I was in a relationship and in, when I was in a relationship I used to test secure Mm. I used to test secure yeah. and so did my partner yeah. because you can't make you each can other be, secure yeah. to a certain degree mm. but really my default um my default attachment style is anxious. anxious. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um same like my default attachment style is anxious as well and <laughs> twins in the trauma twins. trauma twins <laughs> um and usually I end up with avoidance um when I just like started learning about it I was with an avoidant um narcissistic partner so it wasn't going great for me in that <laughs> area um but I started seeing how I was showing up as an anxious person in the sense that yes um I think these these the person I I saw a TikTok that said are you anxious or is the person making you anxious? Ooh, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think that yes the person to some extent was making me anxious. It was obviously an unhealthy dynamic, mm-hmm. but like to the core of who I am, mm-hmm. I was anxious um and how anxious people show up is that they're very needy, mm-hmm. um clingy, we have abandonment fears, so meaning like if the person like starts like utter a key change like the voice in his tone, mm-hmm. the, the the tone in his voice, you're like you're cheating aren't you like exactly. you're you're going to leave me right like you're planning on leaving me so you know you have you're you're constantly like on your toes just like waiting for the ball to drop that's how i was particularly like showing up in that relationship mm-hmm. and then this is someone who i was was very like hot and cold and consistent with mm-hmm. me so every time it was cold i would lose my mind because i'm like yeah he's leaving me like mm-hmm. he's leaving me like i've been left all the other times mm-hmm. my abandonment wounds were like on fire mm-hmm. at that time and i think just like learning about the attachment theory just gave me like a bit more like calm and peace like okay i'm doing this because of this like i'm showing up like this or this is affecting me because of this and this mm-hmm. so how have like how has how have you been showing up like as an anxious person okay so funny enough every time i do talk about um a, a anxious and maybe avoidant dynamic it's always about someone being hot and cold or someone yeah. being inconsistent but funny enough i don't ha- i didn't have that mm. my relationship people are consistent 
oh. and they are committed oh. right so usually That's i i late. don't i don't usually sit and think um like oh he hasn't called me mm. or he's not here for the date or none yeah. of that like they are they are consistent i got stood up so many times in that relationship What? yeah like he would say i'm on the way and then he wouldn't show up yeah Please. like so many times lydia Imagine so many times you. yeah and i would like and and it's after like a great day we've spoken all day and he, we've made plans yeah babe i'll be there at 4 p.m he doesn't show up and then he mm-hmm. just like i call him i call him he doesn't pick up and of yeah. course you're going to be so reactive exactly. yeah that yeah. makes sense so if, um, emotional unavailability doesn't always show up with like he doesn't call me or he's not committed it yeah. could show up with like he's not maybe committed for long term yeah. it could show up that maybe he's not um he's not trying to be vulnerable he's not trying mm. to connect with you emotionally so those are the kind of things more that i see with, with um the avoidance who are mm, dated they're mm. more like maybe they're not trying to be that emotionally you know they're emotionally mm-hmm. present they yeah. have the wall up like that th- that's ah, that way okay. for me the way i show up especially in the beginning of dating in the beginning i'm anxious because mm. i haven't gotten the commitment yes. i haven't gotten the security yeah. so if somebody is not like consistently texting me consistently calling me I'm definitely going to be reactive. I'm going to be imagining like all the worst case scenarios. Yeah. Um another thing with anxious is like you know you're already married. You know it's like you, the person <laughs> I said hello today, you already decided what um how many kids you're yeah. going to have all of that. Like Period. you can be very in your mind about yeah. it. That's especially in the beginning of the relationship that's how I usually am. While mm. I'm in the relationship I actually aren't I'm not anxious in the way that mm. it's like oh I'm here now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so now me I'm settled. I usually do, I am actually over trusting. Mm. If I <laughs> some scenarios like my boyfriend has come home, there's uh there's like makeup on his shirt yeah. and he's been out. But yeah. I'm just like, "Oh, see what's out." You hug the girl, like it's fine. Yeah, you yeah. hug the <laughs> I mean, you hug people. And you hug people, it's <laughs> fine. So I'm overly trusting yeah. when i'm in the relationship because yeah. once i get that security that you know mm. my base is secure yeah. i'm with this person we mm. are here together now i settle and especially mm. if it's not somebody who's like hot and cold and they're not mm. calling me they're not texting me me i'm just like mm, okay we are here so mm. and i think it's a projection because you we see what what is in like us in other people so mm. you're not seeing the the person who's like maybe cheating on you and doing nasty things behind your back or the bad side you're not really seeing that you're constantly looking at what's like you and if you are an anxious person who's dating an avoidant person you're constantly going to be it's like there's a there's a high of being the person who makes him mm. more vulnerable it's you know there's a high of yeah. like you know, you're the one who makes him commit you're the yeah. one who makes him the be the good uh-huh. the fixer you know you're mm. that person mm. so really what you're trying to do is get that emotionally unavailable primary person. caregiver yeah. to be emotionally available and then your story that broken story in you ah, i'll have solved it that means i was lovable mm. all this time and my parents mm. weren't meeting my my primary caregivers weren't meeting my needs not because i wasn't good enough it was just because or, or something else you're just trying to tell yourself the story that you mm. are always good enough but yeah. you're doing it through your partner mm. yeah and i want to say mm. actually with with your par- primary caregivers not meeting your needs. needs it wasn't intentional mm. yeah it's not intentional it yeah. could be accidental even it's like your mom worked a lot yeah well, i mean they they had to provide now what mm. you feel like you your parent wasn't present mm. if maybe um you, you had a sick mom that they weren't able to yeah. provide their needs yeah. there's so many ways where your mm. caregivers didn't provide you your needs but it wasn't intentional, intentional. Yeah. yeah and i think a lot of them not being able to provide for our needs mm. comes from just their parents not providing for their needs as well yeah. cuz um i know someone who they like has no sort of relation no sort of like emotional connection with their parents like mm. both the mom and the dad so their parents just you know for him his parents just like provided for him like they provided financially he went to good schools he he never lacked anything but then he has no sort of like emotional like nothing at all no i love you's no hugs no kisses no nothing from their parents right mm. so he had never been in a relationship ever because he didn't know how to be in a relationship because i i mean ideally like your relationship with your parents like is the first relationship you ever have in life so if you never had a relationship with them how are you going to now suddenly know how to relate with other people especially like in our on a romantic level so he was very like 
um for lack of a better word like just like cold on the inside because he never even like long hugs were like uncomfortable for him because he never received that warmth he never received that 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 like that love that reassurance even if you tell him you're proud of him whatever he just be like stop like that's like a lot like you're doing a lot right now because for him his parents were just these people that I live in the same roof with they provide for me they pay my fees um and that's it you know and just like talking to him he just like explained to me that his grandparents were the same to his dad and his mom mm. like both sides like they had like their parents were just those people they live with mm. they pay their 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 fees they they provide for them yeah this is my mom this is my dad but like other than like beyond that no so he had him and his siblings had to now like start teaching their their parents to be comfortable with like emotions and comfortable with i love you's and um like you know just like just like normal like parent okay not really normal cuz yeah. even warm warm parent relationships basically so i think we sh- we need to offer our parents like a bit more grace um just you know like you said a lot of times it's not um intentional they're not like intentionally trying to like hurt us or not like meet our needs a lot of times they're just repeating patterns or they're going through their own yeah. like f- in my situation like with my mom she had come out of like an abusive marriage um and she was not ne- like the healthiest person at that time like mentally or emotionally just like any other person would be if you come out of like a physically abusive relationship right or marriage not j- not even just relationship marriage and now you have a child so how are you supposed to be like show up as a healthy like parent to this child when you're not feeling the healthiest right so that's why there was like a lot of inconsistencies with her but then now that she's like healed and come into herself now she is the warmest person oh like we God, have God. like yeah like now we have like that consistency yeah. now you know she's more than my mom she's now like my friend and and all of those things and i wouldn't change anything because like what we lacked then like she's making up for it now yeah it so i don't i don't think we should not be getting you <laughs> I don't think we should like um I mean not to say that my story is going to be like everyone else says but just like give our parents grace and know that even if they didn't meet your needs then you can work on a healthy relationship now where they're able to meet some sort of 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 need that you have right now in your adulthood. Yeah. Yeah. Um I'm somewhere between giving grace and holding accountable. Yes. Um so it, like for your case your mom yeah. is willing yes. able yeah. to do the work yeah. and to rebuild your yes. relationship yes. so that's why that works. That works. Um yeah. and unfortunately what tends to happen is that you can offer um a parent grace but yeah, if they're, they're not, still consistent yeah. um either abuse or discomfort or whatever the case may be then it's just not going to be a healthy yeah, place and we true. we need to yeah. live in a place where it's okay to be like they're never going to want to have the relationship that i want they mm. don't even have the capacity, capacity. to mm. have the relationship that i want mm. and that's okay and mm. then you can draw boundaries around what's safe for you and mm. what you know what what makes sense yeah. so for me my dynamic that's a bit strained is with my dad and where we are is that I've drawn boundaries which mm. is I'm not investing in a relationship anymore it's just like yeah. I'm just not investing at all um however um his it was his 60th birthday um in October and I was really going in and out I was like you know mm. how should I do this yeah. and I was like I had already financially I had already sorted everything I got my cousin to plan everything paid for it um and because I wanted him to still have a good birthday because mm. I feel like maybe in 10 years time and this has passed his 60th should um, I hope you would think about Be it in a good yeah. way mm. um and then when I went to church that Sunday it was on a Sunday and then I was I just asked God like you know should I <laughs> should I like what do you think yeah. and I had done therapy and I was feeling stronger it was like I had done quite a lot of work on myself yeah. so I decided to go and I went and my goal there was number one I'm not projecting what I expect of anyone mm-hmm. and I'm just going there to just be present with whatever is happening yeah. if it's chaos we're going to be present with the chaos <laughs> if it's whatever just yeah. be calm and be in your body and i have i've learned so many exercises now to teach me how to be in my yeah. body so that i'm not so reactive and yeah i just went there and i was just like actually without my projection of who i want him to be he's just who he is yeah yeah so it can be that and it's not going to be hey how's everything da da da, da. Mm. but it, it it can be civil yeah. decent yeah. whatever it is yeah 
I think that's a great way of looking at parents as like just imagine their own person. Imagine your parent not as your parent. They're just a normal person. Like regardless of who you are, they still remain to be whoever. You know, they still remain to be Christopher or Ian or whoever. They still remain to be who they are, right? And that I think that changes things for me. Exactly, that changes a lot of things for for a lot of people because I think we put parents on a pedestal where you cannot do any wrong, and if you do any wrong, like how dare you? How yeah. dare you do wrong? So. You know, um, and I think you're right about like the holding accountability, but giving grace. Yeah, be- yeah, because I think we don't, we either hold accountability and not grace, or we either give grace and we're not holding accountable, mm-hmm. which means they step all over us and then we're just like back into like the toxic cycle mm-hmm. all over again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I want us to talk about the avoidance mm-hmm. because as anxious people, we kind of like, mostly tend to date the avoidance so have you been with an avoidant and how did that work for you and what would you say to someone who is in already in a situation with like an avoidant yeah um so i've been with when i'm thinking about it now i've been with quite a few avoidants to be honest yeah. but i think i've been with an anxious I've never been with an anxious yeah, person. I think, you know i think i've been with an anxious mm. i think a fellow anxious person would give me the ick i just like you're so needy, bye. God, yes, I think I have been. Mm. Wow, okay, look, look, we are learning things. Even now <laughs> as I'm here, I just like, wow. So my first serious boyfriend, I was with a secure person. Mm. Yeah, he was secure, he was you. consistent. He mm. was like um, a bit older than me. I was like 18, he was a bit older than me. He provided, like, I mean, a great provided. relationship. Provided? Yes, like, you know, he's the Ooh, one who was Lydia. taking care of dates, everything. <laughs> oh, but okay, then, okay, that providing. Yeah. No, okay. girl. Again, I was like... We take, we take care of ourselves, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, we're in uni, so we're, yeah. yes, we're both students. So it's just like he just yeah, yeah, handled yeah. things, mm. even then when we were young. But then I didn't even think that was a big deal. I was like, see, this is what people yeah, do. Yeah, like normal. This is Bare what, minimum. normal. So yeah, but I was the one who was really anxious and I didn't have the emotional set skill um emotional skill set to be able to deal mm-hmm. with like someone showing up for me like this because it just felt so foreign. Yeah. That's a, that's one thing by the people don't talk about. When you're anxious, um as an a secure guy it might be like ugh Boring, Ink, boring, boring. Where's the whatever. drama? Where's yeah, the excitement? Where's the, chaos? where's the chaos? You know, so yeah. we were together for a long time, and I definitely did love him, but I was definitely the issue. Yeah, I was definitely the issue. So I think the last you know what? I would rather be the issue. Hmm? I would rather be the like the the in a relationship. I would rather be the issue. Yeah. Like I would rather be the one stressing him than me being stressed. Yeah, I know I it's like, toxic, but like I feel like in all my relationships, even if they were the issue, definitely yeah. I, I was right up there making oh, sure that I was balancing. I've never <laughs> been the issue. Just once, but all the other times. Really? Yeah, it's them stressing me. You, you're just like perfect. And yeah. Y- really. Yeah. Nope. Me, I feel like I <laughs> give as much. I, I give stress too. And actually, yeah. when I look back in my relationships, I can see how this is why you were the problem. This is why yeah. how you didn't show up in the right way. So the dynamic with an avoidant, mo- most of the cases, number one, you don't feel like you're it being emotionally validated. Yeah. Because vulnerability to them is, brings a lot of discomfort. Yes. And this is, this. Um, we're going to talk about it generally, but there are plenty of avoidants who are really working on this mm. and they're able to show up in, in a particular way. So let's say um, a, a scenario is something really emotional has happened to me. Mm. So like naturally, let's say if I come to Sharon, Sharon is going to be like, you know, oh my goodness, yeah, how I'm did so it go? Sorry. I'm so sorry. You know, yeah. this is, you know, that yeah. that's what you're really yeah. looking for. But most avoidance might be more like, it's going to be okay. Yeah, solution, solution, solution. Yeah, it's going to be okay. Let's or like, this. what can we do? Yeah. Or, you know, more there than there being emotionally validated. Yeah. And then that is going to react, is going to react your wound. Mm. your attachment mood is yeah. going to be alive in, yeah. that, in those moments because you are seeking desperately desperately for someone to give yeah. you that emotional you know. comfort yeah. so that's one of the things the other things is that most avoidants aren't trying to get deep um, in their vulnerability they mm. usually won't try to be looking in their emotional patterns yeah. um, or how their relationship patterns affect them now or their childhood dynamics they're just not trying to do that they're mm. they're just trying to keep things see it's fine yeah like surface level surface see, level my girlfriend yeah mm-hmm. see well, i mean what's the problem you know they don't <laughs> yeah. really trying to go Deeper, there emotionally yeah. so those are the two things which i've seen um also what i feel is that if you're in the emotional um and avoidant dance almost all all the time when it's coming to the end you guys are completely apart 
you know some people end like when they're hot like you know da -da -da, and then we had this argument or like mm. you cheat and then we boom mm. but a lot of times me what i found is my pattern is that yeah. coming towards the end it's like it's like a slow death mm. kind of thing yeah. it's like you, you guys are just um going away number one yeah. you are getting even more anxious if they're drawing away mm. you are so anxious you are at mm. your worst because your mind is like you know i can feel something is different of course they're not telling you because mm. they're not willing to be vulnerable to tell you actually this is the issue this is how i'm feeling mm -hmm. this is how my needs are not being met how can we work on it if mm. mo if you are if they're coming to the end or if they're drawing away from you then you become so much more anxious yeah. and the wedge becomes bigger mm. boom that's how mm. um what's it a lot of my relationships Dynamics, the have, yeah and especially coming to the end mm. you go be like this and then you're just mm. yeah for me i think i mean i've dated a bunch of avoidance for sure as oh, well i mean not a bunch but i have dated avoidance mm. but i think i have dated one that was like that that he was very uncomfortable with emotions mm. and when it did end it was very no there was no like cheating or anything mm. it was just like yeah okay no this is not like mm. working out anymore i don't feel like my emotional needs are being met mm. and and all of that but i have dated a fearful avoidant and that one was a bit worse yeah mm. because this person does have some sort of like emotional awareness mm. he does have some sort of like vulnerable he can be vulnerable mm. he can like go deep a bit mm. But then when things get real, they get fearful. So they withdraw and they run away. So it's that in, it's out. It's an in, out, yeah. And then for me, what that does is that it activates my abandonment wounds because I'm like, he's left me. I'm going to now proceed to die in the corner. <laughs> like that's like that's how that that's how it literally like yeah. mapped out. Because in the beginning it was it was it was great. He was being vulnerable, he was being open, and then you know, I said like holding him accountable for things he was doing. I started, you know, things started like progressing to the point where he was like, Okay, this is getting serious mm -hmm. and I this is like scary for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna like bounce like nice doing this like I'm, I'm out so i think um if anything i feel like me personally like the fearful ones those ones are the ones like i'm a bit more scared of than the yeah. dismissive ones okay. uh because i feel like those ones give you a little something you know because mm -hmm. i feel like the dismissive ones are just like dismissive from the beginning they're like mm -hmm. i can't go that deep with you emotionally like they're, su they're okay with surface level or whatever mm -hmm. so you don't even really create like a deep intimate bond That's interesting yeah that is true i mean yeah i can understand that it's like no matter it's like you are close you are committed yeah. you are yeah. building a life yeah. things are happening yeah but then that that you know going there yeah it's there it's, it's there. that yeah there, you know mm -hmm. and also usually a lot of I, I don't know why it happens this way but anxious a lot of anxious attachers are very aware of their emotions yeah. and we need it to be you know so we can know are we going to get our needs yeah. met are we know yeah. so we are very in tune then naturally when you have someone who isn't like that and i do you know what sometimes i do feel kind of sorry for from the avoidance side yeah because it's like you're with someone who is like constantly open and willing and talking about mm. the thing which brings you discomfort, discomfort i have yeah. a lot I'm, I'm getting i'm giving a lot more grace mm. to how people are touched because the same way i can't help to be a psycho when <laughs> i'm re emotionally reactive you can't help that yeah. you are uncomfortable mm. with emotions and that's just that yeah. and um what i'm trying to do lately though is that despite our anxious attack um, our attachment styles there's character mm. there's also character yes. so i'm trying to also so hold people accountable for their character mm. even if i understand their attachment because sometimes mm. the character is he doesn't want to commit to you he yeah. doesn't want to be with you yeah. he's not trying to be present he's not yeah. trying to be married whatever the case may be then you are analyzing things from anxious attachment to do mm. what 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 but no. sometimes like no he he's just, just not committed you. Yeah. you know he's just rude yeah he's just a cheat there's yeah. other things mm. that are character yeah, that's true. so which we've got to hold people yeah fully accountable, accountable for. yeah that are outside being yeah attached in whatever yeah way. all your character is yeah. like you are an aggressive person yeah mm -hmm. true um i think for me 
having friends who like female friends that are avoidance i was actually telling lydia earlier i have female friends that are avoidance two are, okay one is uh, disorganized which is like a mix of both and then one is like fully avoidant um and so when i have like when i'm in a situation with an avoidant partner they are the people i call and i'm like so he's doing this so as an avoidant please explain to me why he's why? acting <laughs> like this right and a lot of them a lot of it is usually to do with like communication because i feel like as an anxious person i usually want like communication to be consistent um that's what i was saying even like the change in like the tone i'm like yeah ulikuwa wapi jana what were you doing mm-hmm. um but so i was like in a situation where like this person is not communicating as much as i would want the communication to happen so i spoke to my friend now the avoidant because i know he's avoidant and she was like yeah like i mean it's not that i don't want to like we don't want to communicate with you it's just like for me i'm just like see i'm just like living my life and like you're living your life and like we're gonna talk when we talk and i'm like no that's not how it is you know and i was also trying to explain to her like from my because she even with her boyfriend like her ex now um they would also like have the same like struggles he'd be like you don't call me you don't text me and she's like that doesn't mean that i don't want you i'm just like doing other things gosh yeah. i've never had it manifest this way honestly yeah Yeah, it's so interesting. Yeah, so I ha- I love that I have them to like bounce off of. Yeah. So cuz usually like my default is like to lose my mind and like to come up with scenarios like yeah, yeah either he died <laughs> and he's currently at the mortuary yeah. or he's cheating or he just doesn't want to be with me anymore yeah. or you know like I come up with like scenarios in my head and they're able to like ground me and be like no actually maybe he's just busy have you thought of that you know what i mean and like i'm like okay maybe maybe and usually that's the case like it's not that he's lost interest or he doesn't want to talk to me it's probably just busy but also what i have learned from them is that communicating my needs to the person is what helps them yeah. because usually they are very oblivious so there's one for there's one where how you know that like even if you are with an avoidant person how you know that this person can can potentially be in a secure situation with you is that when you communicate your needs mm-hmm. and they do attempt to meet your needs mm-hmm. or versus someone you communicate your needs with and they completely disregard them and they just continue to like do life how they wanted to do life because i feel like if i'm in a relationship with you and i tell you you know lydia i think it's it's important to me when you communicate with me because it makes me feel like this this and this yes, baby yes yeah, i will ex- be who exactly. you are with me <laughs> and he's like okay i mean i know i'm not the best with communication but i'm going to try and he does try he does yeah. you know call you a bit more often mm-hmm. he does text you a bit more often or another guy who's just like Yeah. So not can you do? You know what I mean? Mm. I think that's how cuz I don't think a partner can ever fully meet all of your needs. No. Yeah. But if he's willing to try yeah. to to listen to you communicating mm. your needs and meet you somewhere, then I think that's someone that like is worth like you like yeah. trying. See, here's the thing though. There's the um in the book attached, actually it's mm-hmm. called Attached: The New Science of Adult Attachment and How It Can Help You Find and Keep Love. It's by Amir Levine and Rachel S F Heller. Anyway, that book when I read it, I said I read it in February. Yeah. Um one of the things is it talks about is the anxious avoidant trap. And it's a trap for a reason. Um, because you guys are kind of reacting you're exposing you're re- you're making each other more reactive right one of the struggles is that when you're in need let's say you're emotionally reactive something has happened oh my god Sharon at that time uh, it's hard for me to be calm number one because I'm an anxious attacher it's hard for me to calm and be like what i need right now is at that time mm-hmm. i'm expecting my partner to oh. anticipate yeah. my needs and that's one of the biggest problems mm. i remember there's a time when i was really really reactive because something um difficult was happening with my dad and then i had a shoot at that day like you know just life was just lifeing yeah. and at that time i could see how i was reacting i was being like a child i was being mm. like an anxious child Literally, yeah you are regressing yeah, you into regress. a child yeah. and guess what i expected my partner to be the parent mm. so why aren't you why can you not see yeah. i'm stressed out Yeah. and why can you not 
put yourself in this in my position yeah. anticipate my needs and meet them so then you are frustrated at this person because you've gone into a child where you aren't asking for your needs you aren't articulating your needs because you're reactive so you want him to be the one who parents you at that time yeah. and that's the problem because an avoidant they're, they're just not there. It's like if you are an adult, so you say what you need and you can't always do that. And the thing yeah. with secure people, majority, secure people are able to usually anticipate and meet their, their partner's needs. And that's why with anxious people, one of the quickest ways to make yourself secure is to date a secure person yeah. because they usually will just, will, they'll be able to offer that security that you need to be more calm. Mm. Oh, girl. That's the problem. Sometimes so basically, we shouldn't date anxious. Like anxious people should not date avoidance, and avoidance shouldn't date anxious. People. What I feel is like, if you're single, please look for a secure person. But if, but how do I know? I can't know from day one. No, you can't know from day one. But yeah. slowly but surely. By but the I'm way, I'm in love in, on day one. That's your problem. <laughs> that's a, that's your problem. <laughs> I'm already in love. That's the issue. No. Um, there's a, um, her name is Catherine Woodward Thomas. She wrote the book Conscious Uncoupling, which is the book which really allowed, which guided me to having a conscious uncoupling from my last relationship. Um, and she also talks about being able to ascertain, number one, understanding your own needs. What are your yeah. emotional needs? Yeah. Not from the perspective of what you want someone to do for you, what your needs are. For me, mm. being emotionally va um, valid, I need emotional validation. That's a yeah. need need right mm -hmm. so when you know what your needs are spend some time understanding what your needs are and then you need to now work on learning how to detect who has a desire and more than anything the capacity yeah. to meet your needs mm -hmm. because I think yeah. I've had plenty of people who had the desire they had the yeah, desire but, but they didn't have the capacity yeah. to meet my needs so th yeah. that, that that's your work when you're single I'm single right now so that's my work to find what my to make sure I know what my emotional needs are and to be able to decipher who has the the desire and the capacity to meet my needs, that's the relationship we're going for. I mean, I think my issue is like I feel like I am aware of my emotional needs. I know what my emotional needs are. I know that the my partner wouldn't meet all of my emotional needs, and some I have to meet them myself. But then, yes, I'm single. But at some point, I, I can tell that this person doesn't have the capacity to meet those needs. But I'm already in love, Lydia. So what do I do? First, you need to stop, stop being in love. But then, like, I'm just, like, speaking, like, as an anxious person because we tend to attach, like, very quickly uh, and yeah. very, we're very, like, hot and heavy people. Mm. So what do I do, like, when, I've, when I can tell, okay, this person doesn't have the capacity to, like, meet my needs the way I want them to be met, but I've already, like, I'm already in love. So here's the, the thing that I had done before, now, the last relationship, before this last relationship, I had said that what I'm going to do is take my time mm -hmm. before I'm committed. Okay. I'm going to take my time, yeah. right? So that is to say that, especially as an anxious, once you say relationship, that's it. We're not oh. going anywhere. This is it. We are going to die here yeah. if we do. So now. before I get there, it's like I decide to take more time. Mm -hmm. More time to kind of see, is this somebody who's going to be kind? This is before I was dating from a perspective of anxious attachers. Then I was, um, from then I was, uh, I was more dating from a perspective of, is this a good person? Is this a good person today? Mm -hmm. And before this, my last relationship, we had been seeing each other for like a year or more yeah. before, we, before committed. we committed yeah. because I was just, you know, I just wanted to be sure because the last relationship, the one before that, it was like hi, hello, boom, relationship, yeah. chaos. You know, it's like you, I didn't even know how we even got to that. Yeah. It just all happened so fast. So then that's the, uh, the next one. Now this other one, what I'm doing is that that time I was seeking peace. That was the first thing. The feeling of peace, being with a calm person, and he was all of those things, right? Mm -hmm. But I wasn't doing it from a place of who can meet my emotional needs, mm -hmm. who can meet my needs, who can meet me where I am. So now that's the thing, the other thing I've added on my layer. Yes to taking my time, yes mm -hmm. to finding someone who's peaceful and calm, mm -hmm. but yes to can has this person got the emotional, um, the capacity to meet my needs? Is this somebody who's comfortable with vulnerability? Is this someone who's self-aware? Is this somebody who is comfortable going in those yeah. kind of emotional places? 
Character is his yeah. character as well aligning with um, yeah. what I want as a person. So now you just keep going. As you date, you add the to-do list. Mm. You add the to-do list. So I feel like when you get to that situation where you do f find that you're kind of falling in love because you're already here, yeah. you have to act against yourself. That's how you even That's find... the hardest thing. Of course, do. it's almost yeah. impossible because mm -hmm. all of your brain, your brain is trained to go this way and you're telling it to go this way. Mm -hmm. But that's how you go from going from dating people who maybe are even emotionally unavailable to emotion. You have to kind of breathe through the ick. Okay. <laughs> breathe through the ick. If, you, if somebody is secure and consistent as an anxious person, you're just like... Boring. Boring, no chaos. You're even trying to nitpick to yeah. find reasons why they aren't chaos. perfect. You create yeah. chaos, you know? So yeah. you just have to breathe through. I deserve yeah. to be with someone who's consistent, to somebody who's emotionally vulnerable, somebody who goes to therapy. Let me tell you this, yeah, that's a big turn on. Somebody who says, my therapist says, oof, like, yeah. oof, oof. <laughs> Look at you in marriage. Sharon. Oh, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm no, you're not. <laughs> She's already married in her head. I'm but yeah, you have to work against yourself. What about the, because uh, I think we've given a lot of like tools and empowerment mm. to the anxious people. What about the avoidance? What do we tell them? Okay, I feel like with an um, avoidant person, if you are able to tell your partner what you feel when you feel it, because unfortunately, anxious people live in their head more than they live yeah. in real life. Yeah. So if you are able to bring them into what is actually happening with your mind so that they don't second guess, that would mm. be great. For example, if you feel too emotional, you'd be like, um, I need a pause because this is this vulnerability is making me more uncomfortable. I know that's even vulnerable to be able to say that, but if you can give your partner guidance on what you need, what you're feeling, when you're feeling it, if you are feeling like you need space, please share and share why, because in all the, the unanswered, whatever the avoidant isn't saying and whatever the anxious is imagining, that's where you get lost. That's where the gap becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, because I wish I knew more like, right now I'm feeling uncomfortable mm. or this is getting to, um, I, I'm not ready for that level of yeah. um, vulnerability yeah. or, you know, I yeah. would have, I would love that. I would love to hear that. Yeah. I did say that I th think I was with an anxious before mm. and I, it was, wow. How was it? Was so it it's like, no, it's like oh. constant. <laughs> the other person is like kind of constant in need of reassurance and yeah. I feel like I became their point. Yeah, I became like more that. like, this is a little much, a bit much. you know um yeah so that's what i would say be communicate where you are so that the anxious person is not lost mm -hmm. with that yeah mm -hmm. i think for me what has helped um with my avoidant partners mm -hmm. was just imagine just like me like just like doing my research and like reading a lot and just like trying to understand what goes on in their mind because i feel like they struggle a lot with like communicating yeah. like it's like sadly I did the work for them, mm. which is unfortunate. But like, because I understood, okay, they don't like being pushed into like speaking about something until they are ready. So I, I stopped doing that. Like I stopped because usually I want answers now. Let's yeah, fix it let's now. It so now. now I would now like prompt him and I'm like, okay, I know like this is a lot for you. So mm. when you're ready, come to me and let's speak about it. Mm. And I would also soothe myself in that moment for, okay, you're not talking about it now, but you're going to talk about it and think you, got, you guys are going to figure it out. Mm. So I just had to like, you know, be the one to like prompt, mm. to to prompt in a lot of situations. And out of that, we were able to like find a rhythm mm. um, that kind of like worked for that's us. Really smart. Yeah. yeah. That's really smart. And for you to be able to do that as a yeah. teacher, that takes a lot of work. Yeah, because it was just also me, like, also, like, soothing myself mm -hmm. in those moments. Yeah, I had to, like, do a lot of, like, self-soothing um, just so that, like, I don't, like, you know, because him, he's coming with his issues, me, I'm coming with my issues, and then now we're just, like, fighting. Mm -hmm. So I I just had to, like, be smart about it and just, like, self-soothe mm -hmm. um, as, I, as I guide him, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And then finally, he was able to, like, be the one to tell me, okay, let's talk about it tomorrow. Let's sleep on it. Let's talk about Like he learned like the rhythm yeah. as time went by as well. Yeah. Well, I think that's really amazing. That's yeah. fantastic work to be able to do that. Um, I don't feel like I, um, I was equipped yet at yeah. the time to be yeah. able to see things that way and then to be able to self-soothe so that I can yeah. be able to deal with it. Because if I'm reactive, no one, yeah. nothing is happening because now well. we are, now we are all reactive. So yeah. being able to use self-soothe yourself and then be able to 
meet him mm -hmm. somewhere where yeah. the, um, the way it's comfortable. I think that's amazing. Now that I'm single, as I said, my entire focus is to to align with a secure partner. It's like I just I'm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I'm done with the dance. I am. And not yeah. only that, because I also feel like mm -hmm. I am not at my best when I am with somebody who isn't meeting me where I need to be met. Because if I'm not meeting them, then they're not meeting me. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So right. I don't think I'm the best. You know, I want to also be able to be in a in a place where I am able to provide, to give the person what they need and vice mm -hmm. versa. Yeah. So I'm definitely looking f I actively if the next partner I want to be with somebody who is securely attached mm -hmm. um, or at the very, at the bare minimum, it's an avoidant who has done all of, of no, oh, has done a work. shit ton of work and now it's like we can go along. Yeah, yeah they need to be way ahead of the game yeah. be, with being able to understand themselves. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if you are you're, you're there in the um, anxious avoidant, you guys, if, you, if you're both willing, it's doable. Do doing it. therapy, yeah. understanding each other, doing the research, talking about it, doable. Many couples do it. Yeah. So I think we've given a lot of our best kept secrets, like in the midst of the, sh of the, the episode. Mm -hmm. But what is like one thing you would say is your best kept secret about this topic? Gosh. Um, this, I would say, first of all, as I said, if you're single and you know your attachment style, please go to the easiest partner to, yeah. to solve it. Like, it, since you're, you, you haven't attached it, just go where it's safest. Mm -hmm. um, but what I would say is being able to understand yourself, your attachment style, what you do, how you react, why you're doing the way you're doing, from a brain perspective, because don't judge yourself. This is something that's beyond you. It was already decided when you were a child. Yeah. So being able to understand yourself from that perspective is going to put you in a position where you're able to support your partner in exactly how they are able to be a good partner for you. Because I feel a lot of the times I was lost on myself and what I need and what I um and the, what was happening with me. Yeah. So then expecting somebody else to meet you mm -hmm. when you have no idea is unfair. Yeah. So Perfect. your level of self-awareness yeah. around this mm -hmm. is going to be magic for how you yeah. can date and how you can be in a partnership. Um, I think one for me is this is not set in stone. Like mm -hmm. attachment styles can change. You can morph into a secure attacher. Mm -hmm. So don't feel like all hope is lost. And this is um, and I think people take on this identity mm -hmm. and they run with it and, it and and they make it. You know, they use it as an excuse mm -hmm. to you know be not so great people in relationships. Yeah. So number one, like they are not. These are not. This is not set in stone. You can morph and you can you can grow into a secure partner. Yeah. And then number two, what has helped me the most is just like a lot of self-soothing. Mm -hmm. Once I learned how to self-soothe, even just like have conversations with myself in my head. I talk to myself a lot <laughs> in my head where I'm just like, okay, this is, is this a fact? Mm -hmm. Is this a thought? Is this reality? You know, like I just, you know, like just do like a lot of soothing within myself mm -hmm. that has really been able to cal to help me calm myself and help me remain calm in situations where um, in the past I would react very you know like a child like I would throw tantrums and like do all of those things so if you couldn't learn like some self-soothing techniques if you could learn how to change the voice in like to talk back to the voice in your head um and just you know just like change like your 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 thought patterns basically it really helps especially when your default is to be anxious mm -hmm. even avoidance i think you know because i think the story avoidance tell themselves is that um you know like this person is going to disappoint me i can't rely on this person i you know like people just usually disappoint me so what's the need you know let me just stick to myself let me just be alone so just like you know constantly like soothing yourself and telling yourself that you know people can be reliable i can open up myself to someone and they won't hurt me i can you know i am capable of being um in a situation where this person is able to give me love and i can accept the love because usually they they push away the love you know so um, i think that that can that can be very helpful yeah. for 
any sort of like attachment style that you have yeah so for avoidance actually what they say is that it's not necessary to share my needs yeah. but vulnerability is necessary to yeah. have a genuine emotional connection so if you see it that way it might encourage you a bit more to share your needs can yeah. i share an exercise on like self-soothing yeah. yeah. so there's this exercise from the book um conscious uncoupling literally is like the best book i've ever read um and one of the ways to be able to understand what's happening with you i do it to even now randomly yeah. is to name and mirror your your emotions and your needs so that goes something like you don't have to use these words but you say to yourself you close your eyes you're taking deep breaths and you say to yourself what are you feeling sweetheart now you're talking to yourself mm -hmm. and then you say i am feeling and be as descriptive as possible i'm feeling jealous i'm feeling angry i'm feeling mm -hmm left i'm feeling abandoned whatever the word is just say it and then repeat back to yourself i can see that you feel this way, this, this way mm -hmm. abandoned whatever the case may be do that with as many feelings as possible until you calm down and when you realize is that you self-validation is the is the result for all of this because mm -hmm. when you validate yourself you don't seek it outside and you mm -hmm. can also do that with what do you need sweetheart and then name what you need so that you can see how you can meet your own needs because truly as much as i'm saying that you do want a partner who meets your needs you have to meet them first yeah. and then them they come in to support mm -hmm. you yeah. um so yeah that that's a fantastic one self-soothing self-validating great <laughs> all right thank you so much for watching do you have any closing remarks thank you so much for having me thank you i'm for being so here. proud of you for doing thank this you. um and these are the kind of topics that i absolutely love so i know i'm going to be like glued to oh, this podcast you. glued um so yeah thank you for having me and thank you so much guys for listening and for watching um and yeah thank you for being here thank you for having me <laughs> thank you for watching or listening i'll see you guys in the next episode um if you're watching us on youtube don't forget to like comment subscribe share this with literally anyone and month. yeah everyone <laughs> that you can share this with and thank you for being here see you guys next time bye, bye.